In the last video, I talked about acute pancreatitis. Although it can be life-threatening, the condition can ultimately resolve without permanent damage to the pancreas. This time, I will talk about chronic pancreatitis and irreversible damage to the exocrine and endocrine parenchyma of the pancreas. The pancreas is capable of repairing itself after injury or one or more episodes of acute pancreatitis. The pancreas repairs itself through activation of pancreatic stellate cells in an adaptive process called acinertoductal metaplasia, in which acinar cells differentiate into ductal-like cells. Pancreatic ducts can become blocked or deformed, obstructing release of pancreatic fluids and resulting in pain or malabsorption. There are a number of potential causes of chronic pancreatitis, including alcohol abuse, autoimmune disorders, calcification, tumors, and genetic predispositions such as R122H mutations in the PRSS1 gene. Chronic inflammation can lead to permanent replacement with fibrotic scar tissue that progressively impairs secretory function. Symptoms of chronic pancreatitis are not uniquely distinguishing, but include upper abdominal pain that increases following ingestion and may be relieved when sitting forward. Chronic pancreatitis may also be associated with nausea or vomiting, unexpected weight loss, and steatorrhea, due to impaired release of pancreatic enzymes, resulting in malnutrition and poor digestion of fats. Chronic pancreatitis can be diagnosed in part by elevated serum amylase and lipase levels. It can also be diagnosed using a secretin stimulation test, in which secretin is released from a tube passed into the duodenum and secreted fluid is collected and analyzed. CT can reveal enlargement of the pancreas, calcification, and dilation of pancreatic ducts, well, MRI can reveal fibrosis and focal lesions, especially with contrast aging. Magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography, or MRCP, can be used to evaluate the entrance of the pancreatic and bile ducts. Treatment of chronic pancreatitis aims to identify and address the underlying cause through therapeutic endoscopy. Surgical procedures such as lateral pancreatic ojejunostomy can be used to relieve pain, which may be severe. In this procedure, also known as the PUSTA procedure, the pancreatic duct is open laterally and attached along a loop of the small intestine. Meanwhile, malnutrition and steatorrhea can be improved through enzyme replacement. Hereditary factors, lifestyle choices, and chronic pancreatitis can increase the risk of pancreatic cancer. Several precursor diseases thought to originate from pancreatic stem cells may develop prior to cancer. Introductal papillary mucinous neoplasms, or IPMNs, are cancerous cysts that develop along the major pancreatic ducts or branches usually in the head of the pancreas. The cysts are usually small and asymptomatic, but they produce excessive mucin that can obstruct pancreatic ducts and cause pancreatitis. SNR to ductal metaplasia can lead to formation of penins, non-invasive microscopic neoplasms that originate in epithelial cells in small pancreatic ducts. Penins are associated with mutations in KRAS and usually occur in the head of the pancreas. Low-grade penins are usually incidental findings of little clinical importance whereas high-grade penins are invasive and are considered the primary precursors to pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Pancreatic cancer is an aggressive malignancy that accounts for 5% of cancer-related deaths. It's most commonly seen in men over age 40. Diagnosis is often delayed due to lack of early symptoms and rapid spread to surrounding organs. Most patients experience dull epigastric pain that may radiate to the sides and back. Initial symptoms can include jaundice and exocrine insufficiency, especially in cancers at the head of the pancreas. Routine lab results are nonspecific, but carcinoembryonic markers such as CA19 may be useful in diagnosis and monitoring. There are a number of types of pancreatic cancer, but ductal or SNR cells are involved in 95% of cases. Familial history, especially involving germline mutations in BRCA2 or PRSS1, is implicated in 10% of cases of pancreatic cancer. Somatic mutations in KRAS are found in 90% of pancreatic cancers, and induced formation of precancerous ductal formations through activation of the PI3K, AKT, MEK, ERK, and notch signaling pathway. Genomic instability is associated with progression to pancreatic cancer, and mutations in TP53 occur in 75% of cases. Cigarette smoking is implicated in nearly a quarter of cases. The prognosis is usually poor, with a one-year mortality rate of 24%, and a five-year mortality rate of 6%. By the time of diagnosis, the cancer has already spread regionally and metastasized to organs such as the liver or peritoneum in 80% of cases. 60 to 70% of tumors occur in the head, 5 to 10% in the body, and 10 to 15% in the tail. However, tumors found in the body or tail are often up to six centimeters compared to three centimeters in the head. 
This is because proximal tumors are likely to become symptomatic sooner due to obstruction. Distal tumors are also more likely to extend into surrounding tissue and blood vessels. Endoscopic ultrasound might be the most accurate diagnostic test, but requires considerable expertise and may not be available in smaller centers. MRCP and CT are also used in identifying and staging pancreatic cancer. Magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography, or MRCP, is a non-invasive method that uses T2-weighted MRI pulses to image slow-moving or static fluids in the pancreatic ducts and biliary tree. Endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, or ERCP, is a more invasive procedure that uses contrast-enhanced X-ray fluoroscopy to diagnose tumors in the head of the pancreas. ERCP can also be used to perform a biopsy or insert a stent. Staging is used to determine the best approach to treatment. Surgery is the only curative treatment for pancreatic cancer, but less than 20% of patients are eligible for pancreatectomy, and the five-year survival rate following resection is still only 25%. Pancreatic oduodenectomy, or the Whipple procedure, is used for on-block removal of the head of the pancreas and part of the intestine and bile duct. Patients with tumors in the body or tail might instead undergo a distal pancreatectomy and splenectomy. Borderline resectable cases may receive neoadjuvant chemoradiation prior to surgery, and patients with locally advanced cancer might become eligible for surgery if neoadjuvant chemoradiation results in successful downstaging. Patients with metastatic disease are ineligible for surgery and may receive chemotherapy with fulfurinox or gemcitabine instead. Endoscopic stenting can relieve jaundice and obstruction, and endoscopic ultrasound-guided celiac plexus neurolysis can reduce pain. The pancreas has remarkable regenerative properties and can reestablish pancreatic microarchitecture through adaptive mechanisms such as asinar to ductal metaplasia. However, cycles of inflammation and regeneration eventually progress to fibrosis, chronic pancreatitis, and development of precursor lesions. Pancreatic cancer can be successfully treated by surgical resection as long as it has not spread beyond the pancreas. But unfortunately, pancreatic adenocarcinoma is rarely detected in time.